Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the League of Ireland show. This is episode four. I'm joined by Gary Spain. And we are here to cover all Premier Division games from the weekend on Friday night. And we'll start off with Finn Harps, Neil Dundalk, four um, goals by Patrick Huben. Two goals by Patrick Huben, Michael Duffy and Greg Slogger off the mark for Dundalk. Yeah, so I, I, neither of us were there, but I was actually speaking to a good friend of mine. Now he is a Dundalk fan, but he's pretty impartial. And it was, it was a very impressive win for Dundalk. Um, I mean, people talk about Finn Harps as being relegation candidates. I think that's probably fair comment. But it is never easy to go to Finn Park. It's always a battle. Dundalk have dropped points there in the past. And they went up, they started with the right attitude. And most importantly of all, Pat Hooban scored in the third minute. And at that point, Harps' game plan goes out the window. And it, it gives Dundalk the confidence to play the play their football. And I, I believe the pitch was incredibly bad. Uh, you can pick it up, I've watched the, the highlights. But it, maybe it's not as obvious from the highlights, but when you're actually there, the, the, the Finn Park surface is not conducive to playing good football. But a fantastic start for Dundalk. Uh, Hooban finished it. Uh, nicely from the end, edge of the box. Um, now, they did have to rely on Gary Rogers. Uh, at 1 0 up, uh, Rogers made a fantastic save. Uh, full length, tipped the ball over the bar. So, had Harps equalised, maybe the game could have worked out differently. Um, just before half time, 37th minute, uh, Mickey Duffy more or less, uh, I think, sealed the points for Dundalk at that point. Uh, he was through, played a lovely pass, I think it came back, it was Huben, was it? It came back off the bar anyway, and Duffy was there again t to finish it, and uh, very clinical finish, uh, th that's what Dundalk can do to you, and they can hit you in the break, and they're, they're deadly. So, that was 2-0 at half time, I think Vinnie Perth would have been obviously very happy with them going in at half time, came out in the second half. 52nd minute, and if it was over before half time, it was definitely over then. Pat Hooban, his second goal, and he is so important to Dundalk and his goals. They made the difference uh, last year, and well, time will tell. His goals uh, win games, and I think that's something that yeah. is really unrecognised by a lot of fans outside, uh, like outside of Dundalk. Like, I know Dundalk fans absolutely love Hooban, and rightly so. I mean, you go back to last season, how many times. Late on, did he score goals and he scored yeah. penalties that were, you know, deciding games and stuff yeah. like that. He's a big game player, and he started off the season very, very well. I, I, I'm pretty sure he's top scorer, or if not, he's well, he's Graham there. Burke maybe, but he's oh yeah, yeah, but, well, but he's yeah. there, there about yeah. because he's, he's there, there about, nearly, yeah. If he hasn't scored in every game, he's scored in nearly yeah. every game. Um, scored a, a great goal against Rovers, scored against Shells, um, and now he's scored against Finn Harps. I think Finn Harps was the only side he hadn't scored against in the Premier Division. So he's put that to bed, and he, he he's just like constantly breaking record goal scoring records for Dundalk. Yeah. Um, and I put out a thing on Instagram last night about you know Jack Byrne possibly being the best player in the league, but I think Hooban deserves a mention for the amount of goals he scores. And you know, like I know there's midfielders and defenders and defence wins the leagues and all that, but goals win games, and more often than not, he does be scoring. And I know last season probably the goals probably weren't as much as they were the season previous. But he was still scoring goals and he still is the best striker in the league. Yeah, no, he is the best striker. I think we'd have to accept that. Talking about the best player in the league, a lot of Dundalk fans would argue with Mickey Duffy as well, not mm -hmm. quite Pat Hooban. Yeah, but, that's um, another yeah. thing. And, 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 and again, I go back to seeing Michael Duffy back on goals, back on assists. You know, they've uh, McElhenney back from injury now as well. Um, so yeah, he th came off the bench. You know. I don't know if that was a good idea, actually, on Friday night, bringing him on, on that pitch. You know. The game was won, but... Uh, I think it's maybe just to get minutes under his yeah, belt. He's a very important player. When he's flying, Dundalk generally are flying too. He, yeah, I, I think he, he is a very important player now, uh, and particularly on the good surfaces. I think on Friday night, the, the players that kind of won it for Dundalk were the likes of Chris Shields and Greg Sloggett, uh, two... Lovely footballers, don't get me wrong, but two big, strong men as well. And uh, well, Greg Sloggett actually got the fourth goal, but they they dominated the midfield, and that gave the platform for the likes of Huben and and Duffy to to win it for Dundalk. Yeah, well, play, yeah. Like, this goes back to again UCD and that great team that they had coming up. You know, Ferruja, Scales, uh, Sloggett, O'Neill, like 
Yeah. They're playing for the top two teams in the country right now. Yeah. And I know uh, Sloggett's just came, he was at Derry last season, impressed so much that he got moved to Dundalk. To Dundalk. So uh, Skills was probably mad of the match. We don't want to jump on to the other yeah. games. Well, we yeah. come to that because yeah. yeah. that game was obviously played last night. But yeah. it's, you know, I, I definitely think the, the quality in the league is getting better. And I think that's, uh, but Shamrock always getting better. I think it's only going to make it Dundalk better and make the overall league better in terms of, you know, getting people coming and watching games. If the quality's there, then people are going to come and see it. And, you know, going back to the game last week, the, the, the top two teams, you know, albeit it was 3-2, um, it was one of the best league morning games I've ever seen. Yeah, it was. I, I, you can't argue with that. One of the one of the, one for the ages without doubt, you know. Yeah. And, and I mean, Dundalk, and people are saying Dundalk, Dundalk have started better than they did last, last season. So they're actually a couple of points better off, and uh, they were something like was it ten or eleven points down by the end of April. Yeah, they drew, still won they the drew a lot of games, and I think they got beat by Sligo, and people were panicking from Dundalk's camp. But it's yeah. still very, very early days. Some teams have played five games, some teams have played four. It's very, very early in the season. You know, there's still a lot of games to be played before any sort of talk of, of, of panicking or anything like that. I think Vinnie Perth gets a bit of a rough ride because he's come in there having to take off from Stephen Kenny, who obviously left behind great memories and, and a lot of success but people forget the success that Perth had last season well, like what he, well, oh, he, well, he, he won the league I, know, I don't know he won, he won the league the, yeah, that's all you can do as well, as well yeah. and he won the United Union Champions Cup yeah so and, uh, I mean Vinnie Perth couldn't have done much more other than win the, the FAI Cup and he came which he lost on penalties you know so, so. let's uh, so I do think Vinnie Perth from that aspect just uh, gets a lot of um, unwarranted stick from people but Pat Huben as well doesn't get, I don't think, enough recognition. And probably, and I was calling for it at the time, back then when he had his record-breaking season, uh, scoring-wise, two seasons ago, when Ireland looked like they had a player to play up front. He should have been called into the squad, at least for a friendly, just to see how he would have adapted. Yeah, he could have been um, worth a look. Yeah. But why not? Because he, he would have seen what Ireland's played at the time. I know we're, we're going back in the past here a little bit, but I just think it, it needs to be noted. From Finn Harris' point of view, because we haven't really touched on them in this kind of segment, but I do think... You know, before the season started, these types of results were the results that you would have associated Finn Harps with. Uh, I don't think I didn't think it was going to be four 0 No, and I, I think any time Finn Harps play at Finn Park, they they can pick up points. I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't give them any hope going to Tallaght next Friday night, but at home, even against the top two, I think Harps are difficult. They're difficult to beat. They're difficult to break down. So I, I think Vinny will be delighted with that performance and that result. Yeah, but uh, Ali, from, from his <coughs> point of view, um, I think he, he, won't, he won't be happy that obviously they've conceded four. But I mean, as I said, like, the Dock are last year's champions and you know, they've won, they won everything by the FAI Cup. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think that Friday night's going to define Harp season. No, no. I, 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 I think it's, I mean, the crucial, they've made a very good start. They beat Sligo Rovers at home, which was a big win. And they picked up, uh, well, it felt, probably felt like a defeat, but it was a fantastic point in the Brandywell. Probably a little disappointed to go down to Cork and lose 1 0 when they could have been 1 up, um, yeah. maybe should have been 1 up. No, it was a foul on the key. Okay, well, all right. Um, but, I mean, they've still made a very good start. They, they were probably everybody's tip to finish 10th out of the 10 teams. And they're, they're, they're a decent outfit. and nobody's going to get any easy points up in Finn Park. They, there may be times when they go away from home, particularly on the bigger pitches, and teams can stretch them. But um, and, and I think Ollie already will be targeting, not so much Friday night in Tala, but I think Shells are coming to Finn Park next Monday night, and Shells are going to be in a battle. There's absolutely no question yeah, about that. I'm dreading it from, from a Shells point of view. But going on to that then, um, the next game, Shells... Uh, going to Daly Mount oh. and losing 2 0. Goals from Andrew Wright and Dan Mandreo. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if you watched the, the after match reaction that, that I did, but for the first half, largely, Shelburne had the better chances with the better two sides. But I'm saying that the two sides weren't amazing. There was, okay. you know, most people who watched it on the TV were saying like how boring the game was, and it just wasn't a pleasant. Uh, game you know I, it certainly I, looked like a cracking atmosphere with the flares and the, brilliant the atmosphere, fans but the only so. the only problem was the football didn't um didn't complement uh, okay. the the atmosphere you know and it was great seeing like I, I was with my cousin before the game and he was down in drum having a, a couple of points with Shell's fans 
and then myself and Hugh, who's a Rose fan, obviously does stuff for us and interviewed a couple of lads afterwards, we'll get to that in a sec, but uh, we went there, um, they had a couple of points and whatever, it was just great to see the atmosphere and everyone was buzz for the big game again. I just think it's brilliant having Chelbon back in the in the Premier Division, I think it adds, you know, I think it adds to the atmosphere of the games. It, it gets bigger hype. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I can come at this one another way now. As a Limerick man, I, albeit living up here in Dublin, I mean, I, I agree to an extent. The Dublin derbies are fantastic, and there's a brilliant atmosphere around them. Mm-hmm. But maybe you could argue there's too many Dublin teams. Now everybody's here in merit, but you could argue there's too many Dublin teams in the Premier Division. We could do with uh, stronger teams, teams around the country as well. Yeah, but you could say in the Premier League there's a lot more teams in London. Uh, not the same. I don't think it's the same extent, though, you know. London, anyway. just outside okay. of London. Yeah. Maybe not, but that's, well, anyway, uh, without getting okay. t- too much into that. The thing I was m- most happy about was when we were going to that pub, we were in the uh, taxi in town, and twice before we got out of the car, it was on the radio, uh, talking about the games coming up, talk, interviews okay. with Ian Morris, interviews with Keith Long. Which has not really been that, you know, not so much hype towards the game, you know, and I think that, I think that there needs to be more of that. There, there, there is actually, I haven't been to Daily Mode yet this season, but there is a lot of hype. You can see there's a lot of hype around Bowes. There's, uh, there's more of a build up. I think the games are sold out, not to mind, so, almost sold out nearly every game, I think. And Shells and Talk have been, sold have out. Been, uh, Shells were sold out as well. There was brilliant hype around Shells Dundalk as well. So um, yeah, I think things are are happening at all of the all four Premier Division Dublin clubs. I mean, obviously Tala is absolutely rocking at the moment. Yeah, and and Pats are doing well too. I mean, there was over two thousand there on Friday night. But yeah, and that's the thing. You're just going to keep the keep getting attendances up. And you know, how many times has there been viral goals and so on? But we're we're, we're going to get to those viral goals in a bit. We're talking about Waterford, um, but just in regards to Shaz and the second half. Um, Keith Long obviously got stuck into his lads at half time and just been like, like what are you doing? Uh, because it was just a. I would, both teams were sloppy in possession. I mean, Shells didn't really have a chance of no other than hitting the crossbar. Uh, and then it was a kind of collision between the keeper, Oscar Brennan, and Kieran Kier- Um so, so, in that aspect, there wasn't, there wasn't a whole lot to be shouting about. Jay's Cabby, I think, was a huge miss for Shelburne. He wasn't, he wasn't there. But I think Shells as a unit, they held tight and they were just kind of compact. And at the times, they were good. Like Jay, uh, sorry, Del Rooney on the left was very good, causing problems. But just Bowes had that sprinkle of quality. And Chris Twardek was just a constant handful for Lorcan Fitzgerald throughout the whole game. He, he was the difference maker and he set up the two goals. He uh, headed the ball across for Andre Wright. Um, because o- O'Reilly seemed to be getting into his head. I thought Wright was going to get sent off. He was, just seems to be getting really really wound up. But uh, Quardek sorry, headed the ball across goal. And there was Andre Wright to head past um, Brady in goal. But at that point then, I didn't really see... I, I didn't see Shells getting back into the game. Because they just weren't showing enough up, okay. up in the final third. They were getting the ball up, playing some nice football. And then when they got into the final third, there just wasn't that quality to get yourself into the box and get get the sh- shots off that you need. So then, um, Twardek again with a, with, a, with a great ball into Mandrea, when it looked like a cross, but apparently it was a shot, and it went straight in. Uh, where we were sitting, it looked like Dan, Daniel Grant had uh, knocked it in, but it was straight in from Mandrea, and at that point you were thinking, all right, game, set, match, but you want to keep the score low, uh, just in case it comes down to, you know, later on in the season, goal difference or anything like that. You would want to keep the score down and, and, and not get anyone sent off or anything like that. So. I think 2 0 is a respectable scoreline, but a lessons learned for Shelburne, in my opinion, and I think they'd be better for it. Yeah, I think, I mean, Shells had a difficult start. I mean, away to Cork, home to the champions, home to Pats, who were just off a European place last year, away to Bowes, who were third. Mm. I know the Harps game got postponed in between all those. But um, so I, I, I think Ian Morris has got to be happy with having six points. I mean, it was a great win in Cork and a great home win over Pats. A decent performance against Dundalk, even though on losing, probably unlucky not to get a point. Yeah, I, um, that's the game. That comes yeah. back to uh, scoring the goals. You know, the uh, same thing as, as both. You know, just not scoring. And them. is this the service to Kieran Kilduff or what do you think? It's uh, it's just when they go up to the to the final third, the balls into the box. Uh, it's just okay. I don't know what it is because like 
people were saying Carl Shepard was finished and stuff like that. I think he's been brilliant for Shelburne so far. Um, I he, think, I think he's a very good player, but he it probably what's been said about him is he doesn't score enough goals. Yeah, but, striker, he's playing but, as a, but he's playing as a winger now. Yeah. He's not playing as a striker, okay. so you wouldn't be expecting him to score goals. I just mean he's doing the right things and all. But when we just get up to the final third, it's just not that quality. Maybe it is the service into Kilduff because generally speaking, when he gets the service, he does score. But I don't know what it is, and that's obviously something that she has to be working on scoring goals. And it's okay, probably, so. it, it is the hardest thing to do yeah. in football. You know well, three goals, everybody. Three goals doing. in four games. Yeah. So. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, the, and the wins have all been by your goal. Yeah. So. Shells just need to maybe get a get a, maybe the Finn Harps game, although it'll be tough. Uh, so maybe get a couple of goals up there. But as I say, it's going to be a very tough game. That'll be a very tough game. I think that's one. Ollie and Paul Hegarty will be targeting for uh, three points, if not one, anyway. You know? Yeah, and that, that that could that could actually tell a lot. I mean, if Shells can go up there and go up and win in Belly Buffet yeah. on a Monday night. Well, they got an important win against Cork away from home as well when they were tipped not to win that. So. Um, I, I and I don't think too many people tipped him to beat Pats either. So I mean, they, mm. were, they were two two big wins. So. Mm. And Luke Luke Byrne and Jay's Cabby not playing for Shelburne were obviously two big losses as well. Uh, so. Hopefully Luke will be back now this week because he was doing uh, some after match sprints and stuff like that. So looks like he's, he'll be raring to go uh, back next week with a bit of luck. You can hear what Bohemians manager Keith Long and Bohemians man of the match Chris Twardek have to say here when speaking with our man Hugh Murray. Keith, the first half tonight was obviously a lot of defending going on for your team. Was there something you said at half time maybe to make them come out and k- kick on and get those two goals? Yeah, Shelburne were probably a little bit sharper, a little bit more aggressive than we were in the first half. They, they, they won a lot more uh, sort of individual duels. They won uh, first balls, second balls. They were quicker to most things in the first half and we were off it. We were we were second best after after a promising enough type of start between you know eight eight to ten minutes. We I thought we, we settled into the game okay, but for whatever reason we, we we stepped back, stepped off that a little bit, and you know it took a little bit of a, a talk and a half time uh, to try and get a reaction. And I think we got that in the second half. Absolutely, you said there's a bit of a talk and a half time there. Your, your lads obviously came out pretty well, all guns blazing, and almost looked like a, a different team. There's a lot more attacking going on, a bit more fluidity. Um, do you think maybe you could have even kicked on and got more than two goals, three, four, five? There was obviously plenty of chances there. McCauley was unfortunate at the end not to get his first goal for the club as well. Yeah, well, we got we started to get our wide players into the game a little bit more. We started to ask a few more questions off Shelbourne's defence. We started to get their full-backs facing, facing their own goal to a certain extent. you know. And what we also did, we got crosses into the box. So... Um, and we got we got fellas on the end 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 of the crosses. We got bodies into the box, and Andre Wright gets a good goal from a knockdown. I head back across the goal from Twardek, and uh, Danny Mandrew gets gets a you know a very clever second goal. Another man of the match performance from Twardek, the Bohemians player of the month as well. What, what a start to the season he's having. Yeah, he's he's been very very good. He's a powerful, um, direct, uh, strong runner, and uh, he has quality as well, and he has a good end product. So. Um, you know, I thought, like I said, both wingers came into the game a little bit more second half. Our front four, Andre Roy came alive. Danny Mandrew grew into the game a little bit more second half. But we we were we were we were better in in terms of midfield. You know, picking up second balls, um, better defensively. You know, we started we were a little bit more aggressive, and you know, the first goal is very is is, is key. We got it, and um, you know, lucky enough for able to get the second goal. Unfortunately. It, you know, we could have got maybe a goal or two more. Glenn McCauley certainly had a great chance towards the end. It's a bit disappointed for him because he's had he's had some chances in games, and um, it doesn't matter how confident you are as a player. You need to sort of you need to get your account uh, up and running really, and uh, in order for him to settle in, it would have been good for him to get a goal. And just finally, Keith, I won't keep you too much longer. Long trip to Cork next week. What sort of a challenge are you expecting there? They're a team with a point to prove, having had the best start to the season. How, how do you think it'll go? Um, well, listen, we, we, we can only look after tonight. Obviously, yeah. Cork next week. We'll recover tomorrow, get ourselves prepared. Um, you know, when we're back in on, on, on Monday. So, uh, there's, no, there's no game easy in this league. You have to earn every 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 point that you, you generate, that you get. So, um, you know, to, to Cork, uh, in all my career, in, or all my involvement in, in League of Ireland football, you don't get anything cheap in Cork, and it's you know so we it'll be a very tough place to go. And and um, but we, tonight, hopefully, second half we can gain a little bit of confidence. But we've got to understand that we need to be better. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Keith. Well done tonight. Man of the match performance again, Chris. You must be getting used to it at this point. <laughs> I think it was a good good kind of collective performance from the group in the second half. 
you know, I think we're a little bit disappointed that we didn't put in a 90-minute performance. Uh, at home, we should really kind of get stuck in, in their faces, pressing high and, <clears throat> and getting the ball forward. But I think overall, we'll take away the positive that, that there's three points. And, and from a personal standpoint, pleased with it. A little bit of a frustrating first half, maybe for you as an attacking player, not getting to you know go forward as much. I saw you make a few runs down the line, maybe a bit frustrating. You have to do a lot of defending as well. Um, obviously, it opened up to you a lot more in the second half. You were involved in both goals. You must be delighted with that. Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the main reason I was signed was to kind of do that, that role of kind of getting the crosses in and, and trying to get assists. Um, but, yeah, just it kind of works out that way some games. Sometimes you just have to be patient, waiting for your opportunity. And then when it comes collectively, we've got to be clinical. So I think... Uh, you know, you can say that it was a disappointing first half and a positive second half, but overall we came away with three points, so uh, so we're, we're, we're happy with that. And, and I think, you know, like you said, frustrating in the first half, a lot of kind of defensive roles, but, you know, I think we were the fitter team and, and that played a bigger part in, in, you know, kind of getting in their faces. And we, we took on what they said um, to just get it forward more. And, and you know what, it ended with, with three points. Yeah, Keith obviously said he had a, he had a few words with the team at halftime to make them come out and kick on a bit more. Obviously, last week you didn't get, you didn't pick up any points in Derry. How important was it to bounce back tonight and, and get those three points, particularly in a Dublin derby against Shelburne? So you know, such a close club. They're only a few minutes down the road. How important was that? I think uh, you know, last week was 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 disappointing. You know, we we didn't really create much. Um, you know, from a personal standpoint, I was disappointed. You know, I didn't didn't get a, a goal or an assist or really create a clear cut chance. So so I think from just a personal standpoint, I really wanted to kind of. You know, create something and 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 be a part of something. So, um, so I think we were were pleased that we, we kind of scored two goals and we were creating chances um, because you know last week wasn't wasn't good enough. Yeah, I'm I'm sure, I'm sure the fans will be delighted with your performance tonight. As I said, you're involved in both goals. They're obviously appreciating you a lot since you signed. They voted you to be player player of the month. That must be. <laughs> It's Keith, Keith Ward there singing a few, few songs for Chris Dwardak. As I said, the Bose fans voted you Player of the Month. That must mean a lot to you to see that they've taken you on so quickly and they're really appreciating the work you're putting in. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of could kind of tell last season, you know, coming and, and playing here that it was it's some of the best fans in the league. You know, great atmosphere uh, every time you come as an opposition, so even better when you, you come as, as a signed player. You know, my dad was actually here at the end of last season. He came to a game and, and he was sitting in the stands and some of the fans around him said, oh, he should sign for Bose and it ended up happening that way, so... Some things are just meant to happen, Chris. Yeah, I, guess huh? so. I guess so. It's, it's a great setup, and, and I'm enjoying it a lot. Congratulations tonight, Chris. Well done, man. Huge thanks to Hugh for that. Uh, speaking, obviously, with Chris Twardek and uh, Keith Long. Yeah, on to the game that you were at then, St. Pat's. Yeah, so talking about teams that can't score goals, uh, St. Pat's. Um, this was Stephen O'Donnell's first home goal in the league. Um, it was a good win for Pat's. It was definitely a deserved win for Pat's. But they, they really struggled in the final third. They were, I thought, much the better side over the 90 minutes. Um, first half, again, it was, a lot of, it was a poor game, I suppose we'll start with that. But Pats had a lot of possession, uh, a lot of territory. They were playing down into the old, well, the shed's gone, but where the old shed used to be. Which I know they, they, they love playing down that, that way. And Cork... Cork were solid, they were very compact, they worked hard, they were, they, Neil Fenn has them well organised, but um, they came for nil-nil, I think, without a doubt, and they could have got it. Half time you're going in saying, yeah, Pat's, without question, better team, but where's the goal going to come from? Where's that bit of quality? Sounds and, like the Waterford game a few weeks back. Well, yeah, and... Uh, this was a little bit different in that we saw the quality in the 56th minute. Um, first of all, Lee Desmond, who I think is, is a lovely player, maybe one of Pat's best players at the moment. Uh, he got on the ball, and I'd be very disappointed from a Cork perspective. There was no pressure on, on the pass, but that's not Lee's fault. He got on the ball and picked out Billy King with a lovely pass again. Again, disappointing from a Cork perspective that Billy King had ghosted in behind the full back. Uh, lovely touch to control the ball just inside the box and, and lob Mark McNulty for the goal. And I think at that stage we could only see one winner. Um, Cork hadn't really threatened up to that. They, they, they had a brief, Brendan Clark actually, the only save he had to make was from Keane Coleman shortly afterwards. But Cork really, a few late flurries, and I know. The, the fans around me in Richmond Park were a bit nervous at the end. Pats were taking the ball into the corner. Cork were pumping free kicks into the box. But I, there, there was one header maybe. But I, 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 I think Pats were comfortable. 
I think Pats are pretty. They're, they're very good at the back. Brendan Clark's a fine keeper. They've yeah. decent defence. They've decent midfield. They're well organised. They'll be tough to break down, but they don't do enough for me in the final third. Now I, I know people are going to say that Robbie Benson is a big loss. Talking about key players, um, so he was missing. Rory Feely was missing. So definitely Robbie Benson will add a bit of quality to that Pats team, but. I still don't see where too many goals are going to come from. And uh, they don't look to me like a team that will be strongly challenging, certainly not challenging the top two, possibly still challenging for Europe. But, um, but it, was, it was a crucial win for, for Pats. Uh, for Cork, I think they'll, be dis- they'll obviously be disappointed. It's a, a third defeat on the road. They didn't score. They didn't really threaten to score. Um, they've only got one goal all season. That was the, the crucial goal in the win over Finn Harps. Um, I think Cork are going to be in a relegation battle. and It's going to be tough for them. I think they're going to be relying on results in Turner's Cross um, where they will have they have great support. They have a great atmosphere down there. and uh, I think it's the, the home games will tell a lot for Cork. Yeah, I think, again, I go back to... What I said, uh, I think it was on the last show, is that you know home advantage is going to co- provide, or it's going to be crucial for the likes of Cork, Finn Harps, Shelburne, even at that, and, and, and Sligo. Yeah. Um, those these types of teams who are going to be there, thereabouts, um, come the end of the season, maybe not Shells, who knows yet. It's still very early in, in the season, but um, Cork, I think at this point now, we can probably tell they're going to struggle for the rest of the season. They're going to try to pick up points here and there and just try and avoid those bottom two places and I think that'll be the aim for about four or five clubs but um, Stephen O'Donnell and Billy King are quite happy so you can hear what they have to say here Stephen must be delighted to get off the mark at home yeah very happy to get off the mark result wise um, you know it's important for us to get a home win early um, obviously we know there's a lot slots that we can improve on but it's important we enjoy enjoy results like tonight and the players go home happy you know but you know we're under no illusions we, 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 we need to get better and we will get better a special moment for new signing Billy King getting the winning goal yeah a great a great move and a great way to pass by Lee and Billy first touch excellent and finished it very coolly so delighted for Billy delighted for the whole team the players deserve that they've been working really hard since pre-season and we're going to continue to do so so hopefully you pick up more positive results Stephen that's your second clean sheet this season you've only conceded two goals in four games you're looking solid defensively yeah we are you know unfortunately the two goals we conceded were two one nil defeats but um, you know we have we have we are looking solid defensively in, in, in regards, um, you know, Luke McNally, an excellent young prospect, has been ever present so far, played four ninety minutes, so he's been uh, he's, de- he's going to develop into an excellent centre half, and then just unfortunate with Ollie tonight, um, the bang he got, so hopefully he's okay, so we've had to actually shuffle around the pack at the back a little bit this season, but any lads that have come in have been good and it's you know it's a team effort it's it's not just a defence it's it's defending as a whole unit so we've been good in that department as you mentioned there the injury to Ollie probably the only disappointment tonight what's the area up there Cause he seems to take a hard hit to the yeah, ground he's just gone to hospital now so I'll go and visit him and, and see how he is um, I think he has a bit of a cut inside his mouth and that so you know um, taking the hospital obviously on some precautions so we'll see how he is and hopefully Hopefully it's not too bad. He was he was talking and that when he was on the pitch, so so that's a good sign. You'd be delighted to have Rory Feely back for suspension next week. Robbie Benson, how is he in line to feature next week? Yeah, Robbie's improving very well, so we'll take it day by day. He done a bit of running before the match today and, and uh, was very happy. So as I said, we'll take that day by day and see how we go next week. And finally, a trip to Oriel Park to play Dundalk next week. A ground you need no introduction to yourself. Yeah, obviously you're going to the to the champions. Going to be a very tough game. They had a good win tonight, so one we're looking forward to. We have a busy week next week. We play Friday, Monday, Friday, so you know it's going to be all hands to the pump, and uh, and everyone's going to be involved. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Right. Well done. As I mentioned, Billy, it must be a brilliant feeling to be the match winner tonight. Yeah, obviously it was one that we wanted to win. Obviously after last week, which was a sore one. Um, and obviously, especially getting our first one at home this season, it gets us off the mark as well. So I think it was a big one for confidence for the boys as well. Um, at the game, performance and stuff probably could have played better, but you know the main things getting over the line at the end, and which is what we did, and we can sort of kick on and build from here. Talks through the goal with a brilliant ball over the top by Lee Desmond. But you didn't have a lot of time to kind of make a decision because Mark uh, McNulty was rushing down quick on you. What was kind of going through your head then? 
Uh, so obviously I've seen Lee Desmond get the ball in space and you know I've been telling him to play that pass all the time in training and stuff and you know I just made the run luckily he's found me and you know I took the touch and sort of had time to take a look at the goalkeeper and I see him rushing out and I just sort of lifted it over him and you know I thought it was going to go over the bar but luckily it just dropped underneath and you know it was a relief when it, when it hit the back of the net. That's your first goal for St Pat's but in January you've been a big hit with the fans so far they've been really impressed with your performances that always a big help when you're a new player at a club. Yeah, obviously you want to hit the ground running when you when you join a new club. You're obviously disappointed in the first few games not to, to get a goal or an assist or something, but obviously I got it tonight and uh, hopefully I can kick on from here now. And you know I think in the first few games our performances have been decent, um, and tonight maybe not so much. But you know saying that we've got the win, and sometimes you need to do that. You need to grind out results, and we hung in there at the end, and you know it was a great three points. The four games into your St Pat's career. Overall, how do you find playing the League of Ireland so far compared to some other leagues you might have played in? Yeah, really enjoying it. Um, you know, we've had two games at home, two games away, and you know, every every game's been different. Um, as I said, you know, I, I love it being here. Um, the gaffer and the, the assistant, the coaching staff, they all have good ideas of, of the way we want to play. And you know, the first three games, I think we've dominated the games. Um, obviously, the results not going our way, but you know, we're still sort of gelling and figuring out uh, you know each other's playstyles and stuff. You know, and I think it's it's only positive from here. Yeah, wait, it's done dark now next week, Norway Park, the champions. Be a good test to where you are so far as a team. Yeah, obviously that's going to be a, a hugely difficult game. Um, but one that we're all looking forward to and it's going to be a challenge, you know, and set up this training this week and prepare for that game, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll all see what happens and hopefully we can take something from that. Billy, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much. See you there, Stephen O'Dell and Billy King. Very happy to speak there, man. Jared Brown. Obviously, two lads delighted with the win. I think that was obviously said uh, their first home go- goal of the season, first home win of the season. So I think they'll be happy enough with that, and uh, maybe they'll start to kick on a little bit from there. Uh, on to Waterford and Derry, uh, two one to Waterford, and I said last week that it was going to be key for Waterford to bounce back. They had a couple of results against Bowes and Rovers where they lost, uh, having been impressive against St Pat's. Um, two. Wonder goals for Waterford that again we'll go, uh, uh, it was like um, Griffiths was trying to or Griffin sorry was trying to outdo John Sam Forrest, yeah. or John Forrest, no, Sam yeah. Bond it was two Sam worldies Bond, yeah. for Waterford and then Steve Mallon was second goal as well with a quick free kick taken and uh, took full advantage and scored a goal which seems to be a good, a good signing for him so far he's on loan from uh, Sheffield United I believe and he looks like a really good player for Derry, but um, this comes, brings me back to Derry and their inconsistencies. Whereas one week they can be brilliant and win a game, and the next week they lose a game. There is no in between with them. They're usually really good, or uh, well, I wouldn't say really bad, but they're usually really good, or they're bad. Yeah, I mean, they, they actually started, they, they lost one in at Oriel Park on the opening night, but I think they were really good, and, and Dundalk had to work very hard for that three points. Uh, I think Derry were really bad against Finn Harps. I mean, the, the, okay, they rescued a point in the 96, 97th minute, whatever it was, but that, that was very disappointing. If anything, they were even a bit fortunate for that. Then they go out, great win at home to Bowes. Fully deserved, seemed to have played really well. Big win. And they go down to Waterford, and I, I think people were expecting them to go down there and win. I probably was. Uh, we were talking about home advantage earlier. I mean... This is probably crucial. Waterford had lost, they'd lost at home to Shamrock Rovers and it was over after 15 minutes. They were two down and down to 10 men. They probably maybe, okay, you kind of expect the top two coming down. It's going to be tough to get something. Bowes, again, it's a tough home game. Bowes were third last year, could well be third again this season. Um, Bowes go down and, and do a job in the RSC. You've got Derry coming down. You kind of feel you've got to get something. And as, as you say, Paul, it was, it was crucial. They went to goal down, 32nd minute, uh, a quick free kick on the right. The defence was asleep. It was a great goal from Stephen Mallon from his point of view, but it, it was a quick free kick. He got in far too easily on the right-hand side, the defence just, and, and slipped it in the corner. Home. Yeah, he just slipped it into the corner, you know, but it was a bad goal to give away from a Waterford point of view. You're feeling, OK... Great start against Pats, but then two two home defeats without even a goal. You badly need something. Um, you were on about Shane Griffin's goal. Uh, Sam Bones, if anything, was even better. If anything, because he lovely little touch. Maybe okay, we can argue about this one, but lovely little touch. Beat a man just before half time and stuck it in the corner. The keeper hardly. I don't think he did move. 
it, it was a very great goal. Yeah, from, but yeah. that was from the edge of the box, whereas that was, the, one, yeah, was okay. the last minute rocket. I know, look, there were two great goals. <laughs> okay, we can argue about this one. Um, to be honest, I actually prefer Sam Bowen's goal in that he, and I, we, I can get a little bit controversial on Shane Griffin's one, but anyway, it was a lovely touch to beat the man and, and stuck it in the top corner from the edge of the box. Keeper didn't have a chance to move. Yeah, Sh- Shane Griffin, Yeah, it was the last minute. I, I, w- I was following this online and I thought it'll be a decent point for Waterford if they can hold on and, and finish 1-1. And then Shane Griffin sticks it in. No. Okay. It was brilliant. He was at least 30 yards out and what a strike. If I want to be a small bit controversial, it wasn't in the corner. I, I was more in the middle of the goal. I'd be disappointed with the goalkeeper for that one. Really? I would. Now, maybe I'm being so overcritical or anything like that. But I look, Shane Griffin, fantastic strike, brilliant control. I, you can't, I, I, what a winning goal. But I'd be disappointed from a Derry City perspective. Yeah, well, the only thing is with the. Just with camera angles and stuff like that, you only get the one view of it. So you can't, like, I, I can see what you mean from the angle okay. that you're looking at it. Um, you maybe would be critical, but if you were seeing it maybe from behind the goal, it might give you a better perspective. But there's only the one, yeah, okay. the one shot, you know, from these games, which is unfortunate. But yeah, look, as I said, you, you can only kind of make a judgment off what you can see. And I suppose if, if, if you thought that. Yeah, no, I wa- and I wasn't there. And I appreciate maybe people who were there can give, give their thoughts on it. Um, Waterford fans are probably screaming at me now. That should have been goal of the season, etc., etc. And maybe, maybe it should. But anyway, it it's do well a, to be Flores. It would it? actually. Well, that probably is the goal of the season or goal of the decade. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, like the last game then was obviously played last night. Chamak over three-two win over Sligo in the showgrounds. Uh, the goals scored by Jack Byrne, uh, Ronnie Coughlin penalty, and then Aaron McAniff and Aaron Green scored. To make it three-one, uh, and then in the last minute, Niall Morahan. Morahan, yeah, the uh, talented young fullback mm. there. Actually, it's like you liked reading the score for me last night as well. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, the goals were being scored. Yeah, no, I was watching it a, bit, a small yeah. bit ahead of ahead. I was watching it on the TV, and Paul was watching it on his phone, so <laughs> I and, didn't uh, realise I was a ruining goal this. For, uh, <laughs> McInniff and a goal for Green, and, and at that point, uh, well, I suppose we'll, we'll get in and talk about the whole game. I suppose. Um, I thought Sligo started very well. They, they, they were frustrating Shamrock Rovers. We weren't giving them a whole lot to work with. Um, you know, and it was the first time I've really seen them really frustrated. Uh, Jack Byrne obviously got the, the opening goal, a great bit of play. And, and he's, for me, he's gone up a level, I think. I think he's gone up a level since he's been training with Ireland. I think ever since he's, he, he went in the first time uh, for the Bulgaria squad and played. I just think he's gone up another level. I think he's on a... Uh, well, I think he's the best player in the league, right? And I know the Dundalk fans will come back with Michael Duffy, Mickey Duffy, and even Pat Hoogan. Mm-hmm. I think Jack Bourne or is Christian. the best player. Or Chris Shields even, yeah. But, and uh, Graham Burke may have an argument on that too. But um, I think Jack... I, I don't think Jack was actually at his best even last night. No, I don't think he took a knock in the second half. But I mean, just yeah, like, he, even he, the way he scored that goal... He wouldn't have done that last season, I don't think. And the same with uh, the goal against Dundalk. Yeah, well, yeah, oh, absolutely. It was a great goal. It was um, Ronan Finn did very well down the right hand side. Jack got the ball inside the box with his back to goal. Now I think you were right. Sligo were well organised and defended well, but they they switched off for that couple of seconds. Well, they, well, they actually, second. yeah, and this, but they switched off. We can come on and talk about the other ones as well. It's it's a strange one and maybe something for Liam Brockley to work on because they they were well organised, they defended well and suddenly they just switched off because Jack received the ball with his back to goal. Lovely turn and superb acceleration but he, he went past the two players as if they weren't even there and then a lovely finish into the far corner. Yeah, so, but I think when you're playing like that... Uh, with that much confidence, you will go by players just like with an athlete. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's yeah. a great finish because, you know, it didn't really look like Rovers were going to score at that point. No, they Shamrock were. They, Rovers. Yeah, Shamrock Rovers, yeah. We've, we've got Shams, we've got Sligo, we've got everything. Okay, we'll, say, we'll probably get them all wrong. But, um, yeah, they, they were struggling to break, break Sligo Rovers down. And, and another thing to bear in mind, actually, it's they were the only club uh, Sligo Rovers were the only club that hadn't lost at home to Stephen Bradley's Rovers side so this was their their first win down in the showgrounds under Stephen Bradley I'm sure that's a, a nice monkey to get off their back it's it's always been a tough place for Shamrock Rovers to go 
Um, I think Sligo Rovers would definitely see Shamrock Rovers as, or Shams as they call them as being their biggest rivals and uh, they it's one fixture they always they, they always look for down in, down in Sligo and uh, they were really up for that last night it looked like uh, a cracking atmosphere a horrible night for football mm, Fair play to the Rovers yeah. fans that travelled in their numbers too Great, great support um, On a Saturday night like Yeah on, on a bad Saturday night as well, but yeah. it, it was fantastic and, and very noisy um, away support as well. So talk to me about the, the penalty. Yeah, um, I, it's uh, just before half time. Uh, well, first of all, I'd say it was a fantastic move by Sligo. And, and starting with Gary Buckley, who I actually thought played very well, he won the ball over in the left back position. And uh, maybe that get, get, gets missed. And, Play the ball, a lovely, a lovely ball from Seymour. Uh, Jesse Devers controlled it beautifully and, and played the ball across. And, okay, it was Pico Lopez on, on Cauley. Um, I thought it was soft. No, I, I've watched it back a few times. Seen them given. I've seen them given. I've, more often than not, I've seen them not given. Or maybe if you're being harsh, maybe it, I know the laws of the game are the same, but maybe it's one you get a free kick for outside the box you don't typically get a penalty for. What I would say is if Lopez goes for the ball like that, he nearly has to make contact and he didn't make contact. I think Cawley went down very easily. Um, even watching it back a few times, I can see both sides of it, but I, can, um, I, I thought Sligo Rovers were lucky to get the penalty. Yeah, and but it was expertly dispatched by Ronan Coughlin. He sent Alan Manis the wrong way. Great penalty kick. He's very confident, to be fair. He did, and he, he's a good player. I think he had a good game as well. Despite what John Caulfield wants to say, I know the Cork boys will like that. Well, actually, I'm. I thought Gary Buckley and Ronan Coughlin are. Uh, we we can come on and talk about the relegation battle in a while. They're they're two crucial players for Sligo and two big players for Cork to lose. But anyway, that's another yeah, argument. Well, no, it's just that John Caulfield said that uh, Coughlin wasn't good enough. Apparently. For uh, for Cork City at the time, so which was strange because I watched him for Sligo many times, and last season he took up a great partnership with Romeo Parks, um, and the two of them were, were, were very good as a partnership last season. But as anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> it's a story for a different day. Uh, then going in half time, it was one all, but at that point, you know, Rovers were struggling. Jack Byrne looked like he took a knock on his lower back. Yeah, he actually said he he was interviewed after the game on Air Sport, and he said he jarred his back a little bit. There, he actually blamed the long bus journey down as well. And, really? Uh, yeah. So, and he had a long bus journey back, obviously, after the game as well. But uh, yeah, he so, just didn't look the same. Like his passes were very wayward after that, and he's just. Didn't look the player that you know he was obviously in the first half. Of yeah, the and I, I thought watching the game, I thought um, Shamrock Rovers were struggling to get going in the second half, and you can see maybe it's the same old story. Um, maybe maybe points dropped might have been even a bit harsh. Had I mean a point in the showgrounds isn't isn't often a bad result, but definitely was one Stephen Bradley wanted to win, and as the game wore on, I mean you're, you're getting into the seventy fifth minute, and you're thinking. This is probably going to finish one one. If if any, okay, if anyone was going to win it, it was going to be Shamrock Rovers, and uh, crucial crucial substitution was Dylan Watts. I mean, he would started last week. He came off the bench for uh, he came off the bench last night, and he he set up both goals. So a, a lovely pass for Aaron McIniff, who made a later run from midfield, and and again the defence just switched off again. They don't want to take anything away from Dylan Watts or anything away from Aaron McAuliffe because it was a brilliant, brilliant brilliantly worked goal, but nobody tracked the run and uh, a great finish from McAuliffe. Well, I actually mentioned Dylan Watts on the last show with you, saying how good he's been and he was unfortunate that maybe other players come in and he was unfortunate yeah. because Gaffney <laughs> came in and they went with a 4-4-2 kind of formation. Yeah, they went with two up top, but I'm not, I'm not actually sure that really worked well. Yeah, it didn't. So, so he yeah. took Gaffney yeah. off, brought on Watts and he was the different maker because yeah. the difference maker, sorry, uh, because he got the two assists for the two goals, and and McIniff, players like that, he's a big game player and he scores big goals. You know, you, th you think of the penalty in the FAI Cup and stuff like that. He yeah. scored big goals. Um, Maybe he just needs to get forward a bit more because he definitely has an eye well, for I goal. Think, I think either. with Jack Byrne there, I don't th I don't think his license is to get as forward. Maybe as uh, as Jack does. Yeah. But with Greg Balzer, I suppose sitting sometimes, I I think he is allowed to get 
further forward okay. when when needs be or maybe he's told to kind of pick and choose his runs that could be something as well but I think Aaron McIniff is a is a really good player and I think again maybe overshadowed by someone like Jack Byrne coming in because they signed near enough the same time uh, but McIniff has, has popped up with big goals oh yeah I know he has and he's a quality player I mean that, that Rovers midfield is just there's just so much quality mm. they have so many quality and players then, there and then up front then uh, Aaron Green with the with the winning goal and he's popped up with a couple of big goals, the goal against the Bowles. goal against Bowes. I mean, he was probably someone who was under pressure. I mean, they signed Rory Gaffney. I know Rovers went with two up top last night. I I can't see them doing that too often. I don't mm. think it worked, and I I I think their style of play probably suits having one up top and maybe more midfield runners. Um, he didn't he, look fit, Gaffney. So I didn't think he looked fit. Well, funny. I, I, yeah, I, I, I was looked a bit leggy. disappointed. He looked a bit leggy last night. I thought he had a very good game when he came on in Tala. Yeah, uh, no, he did. But and it, he but, won the but, ball and, and set up the, the winning goal as well against Dundalk. But that was only for 15, 20 minutes. It was only for maybe 15, maybe the, the full... He hasn't played a lot this season as well, which can make a difference. Yeah. The, the third goal, or the, what turned out to be the winning goal, again, Sligo Rovers defence switched off, throwing on the left... Um, Dylan Watts was allowed to collect it, run along the byline, unchallenged, laid a lovely ball back, and Aaron Green, superb finish from inside the box, uh, 3-1, um, and that, that was game over, I yeah. think. Um, the, the crowd were on the way home, you could see it was a bad night, I suppose you don't, mm. I never leave early they, myself. They got the but, consolation goal then. Yeah, and that young full-back, uh, Niall Morahan, and I mean, I'm sure Paul will tell us all about great young full-backs at Sligo Rovers that go on to better things. Um, this guy looks like a player as well. I mean, not trying to put the mockers on him, but he, he's only 19, um, underage international. Um, it, it was a great goal. Got a little, he made a good run, got a little bit lucky with a ricochet ball, came back to him, and uh, he finished it very well. Um, it was probably too late. It was the 92nd minute. Of, of there was four minutes added on, so there was hardly any time to to, to do anything. But uh, it'll give Sligo a bit of confidence to, to get a couple of goals because they had struggled to find the net. I, I'm not sure. Uh, even though Sligo are bottom of the table and they've lost every game, I actually think Sligo will be all right. They're, they're missing Why? a few... Well, first of all, they're missing a few players like Danny Kane and John Mahan, Lewis Banks. And I, I actually think there's just those quality players there. There's just, they've just got that bit more quality. And I, I think Liam Buckley will get it right. And the showgrounds is, we go back to home advantage and uh, home advantage is going, to keep, is going to keep whoever stays up, is going to keep them up, I believe. And uh, I, I think Sligo, plus Sligo boss always been in this relegation battle for a couple of years now and they always just seem to, to get it right, come late summer, gone into the autumn, Sligo start to pick up points and I, I, they've had a, a difficult start and okay they've taken some bad defeats, I think the defeat up in Finn Park will be a particular blow. But I, I, I think Sligo Rovers will be all right. I, I don't see Sligo ending up the season in the bottom two, even though they're the only team currently without a point and without a win. Yeah, I, I think at this stage they need to win the next game, otherwise it'll be panic stations because they would have played. They've played four now. They've played four, yeah, and, and their next game is in the Brandywell against Derry City, which yeah. is a really tough one. And that's kind of a bit of a, a bit of a derby too. But maybe they maybe they get up for that. But I mean, just in terms of the, the league table, then uh, finally, um, Shamrock Rovers top, uh, haven't played five. Um, Dundalk second. Their only defeat of the season, obviously, was against Shamrock Rovers. But uh, Rovers are, Rovers have won all their games so far. Um, Dundalk are on twelve points, and then you have Bowes on nine points. You have Pats on six points. Shelburne on six points. Um, Waterford on six, six as well. Yeah. And then you have Derry on f Derry on four, Finn Harps on four, Cork City on three, and Sligo on zero. So I think the teams down around the bottom four need to be careful that they don't uh, that they don't get um, sucked in. I suppose I think Waterford would be challenging for Europe. I think Bowes would be challenging for Europe. But I think there's a from. If Shells can keep up similar performance to what they did against Cork and even Dundalk, I think we'll be fine. Um, but it's a matter of, of keeping those results up. And then 
I think Derry will be fine. Uh, Finn Harps, Cork, Sligo. And I think Shells, at the moment, well, obviously the league table doesn't lie, but they're the best of those four, and they'll just want be wanting to stay ahead of those four. Yeah, it's a couple of... We're talking about Sligo in their next game. Just a couple of... The, the, there's a crucial couple of crucial games on Monday night which will tell a lot. Finn Harps and Shelburne, which we touched on earlier. The, the back match between Sligo Rovers and Waterford in the showgrounds on Monday night. Now, that, that to me can tell a lot. It tell a lot about both teams. I mean, yeah. Waterford have had a couple of crucial wins. I think Sligo need a win, and that's probably a must win. Um, and, but even about the bottom, going back to the top, I mean, five wins out of five for Shamrock Rovers. It's actually the first time Shamrock Rovers have done that since 1965. Even the great Jim McLaughlin's team never started the season with five wins. Now, but if you want to go back, and maybe it's an omen, in 1965, Shamrock Rovers started the season with 11 wins, and they didn't win the title. They were pipped by Waterford at the end, who, who were actually nearly in the relegation zone. I don't think Waterford are going to win the title this season. But um, I know Rovers fans will maybe not, want, not thank me for pointing that out. Yeah. No. Ah, look, uh, time will tell. It's still very, very, very early in the season uh, for, for even talking about who's going to remain in the, the bottom two and so on, who's going to remain at the top. So, anyway, let us know your thoughts in the comments. That's been our League of Ireland show. Um, don't forget to check out the aftermatch reactions and so on from Friday night on our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching. We'll speak to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like the video.